Revelation, the closed book open. Hello, welcome back to Midship Ministries as we continue our study and we are on lesson number 10, part 2, the 144,000. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pause once again to thank you for your words. We thank you for the privilege of studying your words. Be with us now as we open your words. May your Holy Spirit attend to us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So we look at question number five. If the Jews did not keep their part of the covenant, what did God say would happen? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 18. And it says, they would perish. They would perish. Rent lease is a similar covenant that is conditional. What are the conditions? Rent will, pay, will be paid monthly. So I will give you my apartment. If you pay me monthly, I will allow you to use it. If one party breaks the contract, the other party is not honor bound to keep his part. Some look on God, on God's promises to the Jews as a total unconditional covenant. It is not so. No such thing is possible with God. This is because God has made his covenant or contract with creatures that have a free will. God's promises to everyone are on the same basis, not just his promises to the Jews. So let's look at the conditional covenant. Who in the final analysis determined whether God would fulfill his promise to a nation? Jeremiah 18, verses 7 through 10 says, it is the nation itself. So the nation will determine what happens. Now, because Eli disobeyed God, what did God say about his promise to Eli? And I want to read this passage. It's Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 30 and 31. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me, for, thou, for them that honor me, I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thine house." Now, it is not a matter of God changing his mind. He is just keeping his promise. Obey me and live. Or if you disobey me, you'll die. 
That is the covenant. Now, once God promise an individual, can he change that promise? Ezekiel chapter 33, verses, 16, verses 13 through 16. And let me read that. Ezekiel 33, verse 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, verse 14, When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he hath robbed, walk in the statutes of life, without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall live. Now, God's relationship to individuals is on the same condition as his relationship to a nation or to churches. Now we can see that the, the vital importance of careful obedience to God's requirements. Satan soft talk Adam and Eve into lightly regarding God's express commands to them. Their disobedience reversed their position with God. Today, it is the same with us. It is not enough to say, I love God. He will understand if I do not obey all his commands. We must love God and keep his commandments. The word is, obey and live or disobey and die. There is no once saved, always saved. I must maintain my relationship with God. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you again for your words. Be with us now. Continue to bless us as we lift you up in the study of your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, for additional information or greater clarity, contact your local Seventh-day Adventist Church. God bless you. Until next time.